Hi. So I'm just going to touch the basics and I want to talk about, you know, spiritual life and having to deal with an everyday life. So one thing that I have noticed throughout my life while working with a lot of people and meeting tons of individuals is that when we learn about spirituality and, you know, maybe a bit more than what we get in the physical world, like let's say, oh, I'm a starseed, so now I believe in other races and read about Pleiadians, we hear about Tigetans, we hear about, hear about Andromedans and other beings, then spirit guides and then various communities and then some of the groups that are here to help us and guide us and teach us and they give messages and channelings and a lot of other things. So there's good sides, there's also bad sides. There's, you know, like, okay, well, some people get entities. Some people have heard and talked about soul traps and grids on earth and, you know, being targeted to individuals, being gaslighted, being gang stalked, secret space program 20 and back, my lab and tons of things. So like we get to hear the good, the bad, the crazy, good, ugly and everything else. So when we get caught up in the spirituality and our everyday lives, a lot of people, it's very similar to those who look into, let's say, hang, hand signs, various signs, numerology, they catch little bits, and while they have not done full research, or maybe they're just starting out, it becomes their first thing. It becomes their main focus, and the only thing they will see. So now every single number that pops up has some meaning, and it might scare you, like, oh my god, 666, holy cow. And you think about Satanism and, you know, like, all the about black magic and rituals and it makes you feel like, Ugh, when actually it's just like, you know, like, balance and, you know, like, more sort of like about love and all. We don't think about those things. We sort of like, 666, oh, they're using it in movies. We've seen it with the elite. We've seen it with dark stuff. So now we connect it with bad things. And then people look into handshakes, find out about Illuminati and all these things. So now they're watching everyday YouTube videos. They look at me going like this, like, oh, I'm really Satanist. And I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm a reptilian. <laughs> and you're like, whatever, just joke around and all. But a lot of people overcomplicate things or start looking for meaning where there is no meaning or even look at everyday little things and start thinking that they're targeted by entities, they're targeted by other things, when not absolutely everything is a cause of all of those little things, you know, like not, it's not all about spirituality. So for me, it's like, where do you as a person draw a line between how much you're going, going to go into your spiritual life and how much you're going to take care of your physical body and everyday life? And for me, I've been a lot into the spiritual place and what do you like define spiritual for yourself like it's not like by the book this is what everybody does like everyone is different everyone understands it differently everyone you know like looks at all those things but we you know as people i think hear so many stories and then start doing research and then every day it's about learning something new and practicing and everything else and it's great if people practice but coming back to me it was a lot of work Let's say, I think like from when I was 18, I was started, like, starting to do more of it. When I was 14, it was like a lot of like meditations, visualizations, out-of-body experiences. Around 18, it was more like learning about soul contracts, entity removal, a lot of other things. So like like years and years, I'm 25 right now, it's barely, uh, you know, for people who are way old, older than me, like I haven't experienced anything. And I can totally agree, like I know I know nothing. Everything I've learned so far is like my beliefs can change every day. Even now, like a lot of years I, I was buying into the soul thing and soul traps and everything else. And I experienced it, but I'm realizing it is a trap right now. So with everything that's going on, I've learned that like, hey, I have to pause things. I have to take a break from spiritual stuff. Not like necessarily abandon it, not like become unspiritual, but more like, hey, physical life, I have to take care of those things. And not everything is about entities or agreements or energies. It's like, hey, you didn't get enough rest. Your diet is not the best. You should like, let's say exercise, go for a walk. You should read some books or something. And those little things became like, I forgot about it. It's like, I completely... For a while, let go of the physical stuff. I was like, you know, draining myself and doing spiritual work and everything else. And oh, spiritual work. So you just like sit there and boom, like that's it. Like, <laughs> not necessarily that, but 
so, like drawing a line between physical things where let's say people might have arguments you meet so someone you get some weird interaction it's like kind of like feeling drain and everything but it's not always the energy vampires it's not always being targeted individuals and npcs around you and people being messed with to mess with you and you know like some people will try to look for significance they want to feel significant in their lifetimes and that self-importance is huge for them so like a lot of the a lot of people will go like oh in my last like in my past life i was jesus christ i was actually bruce lee i was einstein and you know like they will find key figures in the world that they admire look up to that they might have some matching beliefs and then you know they say they have a they have a very strong feeling that they were incarnated as that person it's like okay <laughs> you know like you can't you can't prove it you can't confirm it there are some people who will recall past lives you know you you read stories about kids who you know go for a walk and like let's say mom dad you know like uh you're at my parents i lived before and they find their dead body and tell the whole story about it and you're like holy cow and they know all the details and how this child could possibly know any of that because he's like five or six and they know everything about the person and the other family confirms everything and it's like yep yeah, that would be proof enough so like a lot of these situations happen and again like i'm going all over the place I don't really have a point except we need to sort of separate physical let's say everyday stuff we do and spiritual stuff we do because there's a whole lot of people in spiritual community who hate earth and life here but will not do anything about it of course spiritual world like spiritual work is great learning about andromedans about pleiadians about tegetans wanting to be extracted, wanting to be saved from here and everything else is great, but it's very likely not happening. Like, I'm sorry to disappoint you, you're not going to be saved. An alien ship is not going to come over land and take you. That's not happening. If you can get your consciousness out of this body somewhere else, awesome. But your physical body is not going to be taken. And then you can like look through the window and wave goodbye. That's not happening. And a lot of people will have this, I'm important, I'm a star seed, I'm a Andromedan, I'm Pleiadian, I did this, I have this amazing past life, I know things about spiritual stuff, but their physical life here on Earth sucks, and they will not do anything to take care of themselves, or, you know, like, they will continue on blaming anything else around them, everything except them. Everyone is bad, wrong, guilty, crazy, and, you know, like, the world, the way it is, it's bad, and we'll see constantly negatives everywhere, but their life... It's exactly the reflection of how they feel. Uh, everything that they blame is like exactly a reflection of how they are in everyday life. And I think like learning to take some responsibility for, you know, hey, I'm not a perfect example. I'm not like, look at me. I know everything. I've mastered it all. Like, no, not at all. But I'm sharing my journey and I've looked at myself where, you know, I've been into that spiritual work and I'm still doing it. But I'm learning to sort of like, okay, you know, I can, let's say, work an hour or two on myself, like, let's say, getting rid of the fantasies or other little things, looking at my beliefs, trying to get rid of things that are not like anymore serving me. And at the same time, physical life. Am I eating right? How is my body doing? Are my hormones okay? Um, you know, like, am I able to be grateful for little things even though let's say yes this is prison yes this place sucks for some people and everything else we don't like it we don't like the way it is we don't like being controlled we don't like a lot of things that are happening but it's you still live here you're not going to kill yourself if you wanted to do that you would have done it already so you're still here sticking around and if you keep on complaining nothing's going to change so yeah you can complain but it's also like looking for ways to make our life better one way or the other is very important and of course we might not like everything that's going on but finding ways where okay i'm gonna find a compromise where so learning about what's out there let's say various alien races and your past lives and anything else out there like exploring the astral planes ets entities secret space program everything else learning the picture of this let's see galactic war and war in heaven and everything else how is that important 
you know, like getting the understanding. If you can, if you can work on yourself, let's say, looking at some of the past lives where you made wrong decisions or God beliefs that are triggering you right now in your daily life. Yeah, confronting that, dealing with it, and letting go of things that are getting in the way, it's very important. But if we're like more looking at, oh, wow, look, I've seen this thing, like the importance or the ship and certain stories, how well is this helping you right now? Just the memory or just the scenario is a simple story. And if you can get something out of it, like, let's say, okay, you learn your importance. You learn of the things you were doing before. You might like, oh, I had no idea I was such, you know, had such great skills of music. That I was a healer, that I was doing energy work, that I was, you know, shifting consciousness and altering events and, you know, working on timeless and everything else. So that gives you insights into who you are as a being. You get some story about yourself and that's great. But for a lot of people, you know, we learn about various races and everything else, but eventually none of that applies to our personal life here. We have the knowledge, but how much is it valuable? How much are you using it? It's like, now you have a knowingness, cool, but how are you going to apply it here? And it's not like you have to make this life perfect, but if you're not getting out anytime soon, then... You might as well look at, hey, if life sucks right now, I will kind of have to take care of physical things. So finding that balance between learning and not drowning in stories and hooks and feeling states like, you know, the whole thing, we're going to be saved. Astro Command is going to come and save the world or certain things like, you know, we're waiting for this big event to happen, big thing. And when this is going to happen, everything's going to change. And some people will not do a single thing to take care of their lives and make things better until that big event happens that they've heard about or read about or thing that's going to happen. And they put everything on hold, absolutely everything, waiting for salvation, waiting for things to change. But the mindset that they're currently in, I'm going to be saved and I'm not going to do anything, but life sucks. Nothing's going to change. You're going to keep on creating that. You're going to you know, like you're exactly the problem here. You're exactly the reason why things are going on. It's like you look at all the, you know, like figures in the world that might have made a bigger impact throughout history. And there's quite a few people that have said, you know, like that it's not the evil people that are at fault, but of course it's also a wrong belief in a way, but the good ones that allow it to happen. It's like, you know, oh, I'm just not going to do anything, being passive about it, like you have an opinion, but you don't take a single action. And you're like, yeah, you know, people should not wear masks, puts it on and tries to like get in the crowd and everything else. People shouldn't do that thing. And, you know, I shouldn't blame everyone else. I shouldn't point fingers now. But we're like, comply or let's say go with a certain story. We're like, yeah, but not take a single action. And, you know, we also are a part of certain problems that are going on in the world. Let's say, why are we being suppressed? Why are like they taking away their guns? So, like I took mine away, but why are others not fighting it? Hmm. Hmm. Huh, I don't know. So like learning that balance where you look at what's important to you here while you're here and life is going to suck until, you know, you start taking care of it. You start taking res like responsibility for what you have. And then of course, spiritual stuff. You learn about, you know, okay, afterlife, what should I know? Things that are important to you, go for it. But drowning in stories that promise great things that are never really going to come, unless you take action, then, you know, a lot of people are like, Swaru, she's so amazing. Save me. And they're going to live their whole life wishing for Tigetans to come and save them, for Pleiadians to come and save them, for Azure Command to come and save them, and someone to change everything. Like, there's a lot of these stories, and people stop taking care of themselves. And... I don't know. I'm just rambling here, but I think it's very important to find that balance of if life sucks, what can you do not to make your life amazing, but day-to-day -day life a little bit better so that you could handle it more. And while you're here stuck, at least have some better life, a little bit more quality in life, a little bit more enjoyment. 
then everything sucks. I'm the process can be and I'm waiting for death and hopefully I'm going to be saved before then. You know, that's not the way to live, but who am I to tell you? So I'm just sharing my thoughts and point of view of today. It might change tomorrow. We'll see. But until then, you know, if you have like, share your, share your opinion. Where do you draw a line? What's important to you when you look at spirituality and do you take care of your own physical life here? What are some of the things you focus on? Let's say, yeah, having a roof over my head is, you know, important, you know, getting everything covered with having enough income and everything else is important. And then what are some of the things that will make you happy? Like, do you get to exercise? Do you get to maybe play video games or read certain books? And that's like, oh, that was like nice thing to do. And you get some quality out of life. Or it's like your one side is more active than the other. I'm still not balanced. I'm still looking for things. I was more recently focused on the physical. Let's say fixing my body and a lot of other things that I'm learning. But, you know, like now also getting back more into the spiritual stuff. So it's like one 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 gets a bit more attention than the other but anyway i'm gonna zip it now thanks for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye